What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today it's part two of the completely free ARCHICAD course. So to progress with our course today, we are going to be exploring the site, mesh and modeling in ARCHICAD 26. Now I'll point out, one, I'm still sick, so I do apologize for that. Two, site modeling and everything that I show in ARCHICAD 26 is convertible across all ARCHICADs. Basically, the new ones that come out, ARCAD 23, 4, 5, you name it, it's pretty much all exactly the same thing. So what you want to do is if you have a DWG available from a feature surveyor, drag and drop that into your project right now. I'll quickly drag one in and get rid of any confidential information. Okay, so now we've dragged DWG in from the surveyor and sometimes it comes in color, sometimes it comes in black and white, it really depends on the surveyor itself. If you don't have one, this isn't going to be too critical for this stage of the actual works. And you can basically still follow along the same steps and procedures. This just gives us a bit more of a bounding box to design and work with. So I've dragged it in first of all, and it is not to scale at all. What we want to do is first select the whole thing, zoom in, press Command K to activate our resize tool, press OK, and then find a dimension. So for example here, 19.5 is our front boundary. So what I'm going to do is zoom in to one section, come all the way across by zooming in and out using my scroll wheel, click on the second point, and then you'll see the line starts to extend, but nothing happens. What we want to do is type 19500 because this is in millimeters, not meters, and then press enter. If we now zoom out, our feature survey is completely to scale in both formats. Please take note that with ARCHICAD, you can only scale in both directions at once, you can't scale just in one direction. So if it isn't formatted correctly, if it's shrunk the wrong way, you're gonna have a bad time. Now that we have our site to scale, what I'm gonna do is select all of these markers for the sections and elevations that are basically in our way now by holding shift and clicking on each of them individually. Next, I'm gonna press Command or Control D, depending on which system you're on, to move them out of the way. Now, before we start using our mesh tool over here, we want to make sure that our site is set up correctly so we don't have any problems later on. For this project, if you're looking at it, 6.4, 6.2, your rough ground level for the house or whatever you design on this would be anywhere from 6.4 to 6.3 if you're building on natural ground. So let's say we're going to use 6.4 as our floor level and then basically fill some more sand in front of it. What we need to do is come up to ARCHICAD, go down to Project Preferences, and then scroll down to reference levels. When the little pop-up opens, you're gonna see project zero, elevation zero. First reference level is zero, second reference level zero, and all the same. What you want to do is actually change the first reference level. So we wanna change that to minus 6,400 and press enter. Why? Will all make sense in just a little minute. Now it's time to come across to our mesh tool and start using this. I'm going to make sure you get into very good best practices from the start in ARCHICAD. First thing you want to do is make sure you're looking at your layers. What layer is this on? Where is it showing and why? Mesh site is automatically default to mesh site, which is perfectly fine. It isn't visible. So as you can see, the eye is crossed out and gone because we're on the wrong view map. As you can see, we're on the ground floor presentation, so obviously they don't really care too much about the site. Now I have skipped a step to be completely honest, and that was by not putting this feature survey on the right level. So let's quickly just select all of the feature survey and change the layer to site context and press okay. Now, if we double click on our site plan, increase the scale from one 200 to one to 100, zoom out a little bit, press our settings, get our current window settings as discussed in part one, we can now come to our mesh tool, see that our mesh site is activated, and then we can choose one of our four objects here. We can go from polygonal, we can go rectangle, we can go rotate a rectangle, etc. For this, we simply wanna go for the polygonal and click around our boundary. So zooming in, making sure we're selecting just that green line, following the procedure and process all the way around, clicking once more at the very end. Now, what you'll see is if I zoom in, you will see the difference of each line thickness, and it gets a little bit messy in my opinion. So personally, what I like to do is come up to view, go on screen view options, and then untick true line weight. So if I untick that, it is much cleaner, much nicer. They are all the consistently same pen weight. 
and I only turn that back on when I need to cross check pen weights. Now I have a lot of experience with the pen weights. I know which ones to use, which ones not to use. So this isn't always recommended for beginners, but if you do want to change it, it is up there, just true line weight on and off. Now, if we click in the middle of our site, it will highlight that mesh immediately. And if I right click, show all in 3D, double click my scroll wheel, it will center my site. And you'll see, amazingly, it's created a 3D site, grass on top, earth down below, and we have a big rectangle, nothing special, nothing too fancy. But obviously we need to make this proper and we need to make it look exactly like the site itself. So let's come back to our site plan, select the mesh, go back to our mesh tool, making sure that we are on the polygonal tool because this doesn't work very well otherwise. Holding your space bar allows you to use the magic wand tool. The magic wand tool can be used in a number of ways and we'll discuss more ways as we progress through the course. But for this use case, we're basically gonna hover over one of these contour lines, click OK and click OK. So then we're gonna repeat that for every contour line on this feature survey. Luckily, there isn't too many, there is only a couple. So now what that's gonna do is basically create hotspots and nodes that we can adjust the levels and heights of this mesh. So by clicking on it, you'll see hundreds of them. By going back to 3D, you'll see the contour lines drawn in in 3D as well and hotspots available. If you simply wanna mess around with it in 3D, you can select any of the hotspots, look for the little pop-up toolbar, select the little Z arrow, which is elevate mesh point, and you can drag it up, drag it down, do whatever you want and it adjusts the mesh accordingly. So I'm gonna press Control or Command Z or Z, however you like it, undo that command. Come back to our site plan, select our mesh, zoom in a little bit, understand that this corner is 5.94. So I'm gonna select the corner and do the same. And instead of going to mesh reference plane, I'm gonna to go to first reference level, which we changed a moment ago. You'll see that we had to go minus to be able to actually get this in positive territory in ARCHICAD. So 6,400 is our zero, zero ground level but we wanna adjust this to 5940, press OK. We're gonna repeat the same steps for all four corners because they're quite simple. And then we don't really wanna go through each individual little node and change them all to 6000, 6200 because that would just drive us all crazy. So we are gonna select one. We are gonna change that back to first mesh level. We'll simply type in 6000 and make sure we select apply to all and press OK. I'm going to repeat the same process for the remaining contours. And then when we're done, we can come back into our 3D site. Now, zooming around by holding shift and clicking the scroll wheel, we can see our site is relatively flat. Yes, absolutely. But there is a slight fall from the back left corner over here to the bottom right hand corner over here. Now, this is just our existing site mesh. If we come back to our site plan itself, you'll see we also have a little bit of an extended verge here. We have the curb from the road and then we have the road itself. Now, obviously I know this site well, I have the PDF information which has a bit more confidential data on it to tell me that this is the road, this is the verge, etc. So I'm making some informed decisions here. At the same time, I know that these three lines are services to the property. For example, this I know is water because it is labeled as water. This is also water and the last one is gas. Now, if you wanted to change them to different colors just so you can delineate what is what, you can quickly go through, change the colors so you know you've got water, most likely sewer and most likely gas. What we wanna do is model a bit of our context as well so that when we do 3Ds later down the track, we have a little bit modeled, we know what's going on. So by holding our option button, we can activate our eyedropper tool, select our mesh, click once, create our extended mesh to the curb, and then finish off our rectangle. Coming back into 3D, you'll see it's created a new flat mesh following the same principles. So back into our site plan, simply follow those steps, adjust our corners accordingly, and you'll see it's updated to reflect that. Now there are also contour lines here if we wish to go to that extent. So same system, hold the space bar, click, 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 and update the nodes. And there we go. That is quickly tying back in so it looks very seamless and clean. We can repeat that same process for the curb and the road. And next we'll start talking about materiality in our site mesh. Now that we've modeled our curb and our road, you're gonna see one thing different about the road. First of all, the road is just a millimeter thick. It has no context to it underneath. 
which is a little bit strange compared to what we've drawn before. Especially if we look up the top here where it says 1000 millimeters deep, exactly the same as all of these. Now ArcCAD will show you this exact scenario every single time if your falls across the mesh you've created are greater than one meter. So if you do need to see the earth underneath for whatever reason, simply increase that depth and it will automatically create something for you. So by adjusting that 1000 to 3000, we've managed to get our earth back. Now, obviously this site isn't all grass. We know the roads aren't grass. We know the curbs aren't grass. So let's start with our road. If we press command T, to open up our settings, we're gonna see all of the mesh settings. Now, I'll run through these relatively quickly to give you an in-depth understanding of what they are. First of all, we already spoke about this. The 3000 indicates the depth of the mesh. The zero indicates it's offset from this home story. The home story in this instance is ground. We'll talk about these home stories in the next part of this tutorial. Our project zero is zero, which if we change to first reference is six four. And then we have our actual composition types. If we select soil, you can change it to any other composition. You do wanna make sure this is relatively consistent to the products you're using because it will help you as you dive deeper. So the more good habits you pick up now, the more you will thank yourself in the future. I'm happy to leave it as soil for now. It's not too big of a deal. I won't talk about pens and line weights and correct combinations. And because there are so many viewers from around the world, there are a number of different combinations of how this can be set up. Yes, there is a generic standard that everybody should be using. Does everybody do that? Absolutely not. ArcCAD by default does provide you with what they should be. So if you scroll across, you can see that it's changing its name up the top here. And the more you spend on here, you'll recognize what pen they should be and what line weights they should be. ArchiCAD is again pretty good. It will automatically change these to what they should be. So 153 is already set up by default as earth cut lines, which is exactly what we're looking for. I'll come back to this model section in just a minute. However, this classification section down below is going to be really important when you're creating schedules, especially for doors and windows. So make sure it's always in the right classification. Your IDs are for your ID markers and tags, which allow you basically to model appropriately and then provide information back linked accordingly. You can go through all of these, input, update, and correctly address them. But these are some pretty substantial and very advanced techniques in ArchiCAD. So for this course, we will not be going into anything of this depth and magnitude. Now you see three images here on the side the top surface, the side surface, and the bottom surface. The top surface is overridden, which means we can automatically change whatever we want that surface to be. If I untick it, press OK, it will change it back to soil for the very simple reason, Command or Control T to open this back up, it is defined as soil, and that has its own textures built in to the model material. So by coming back to our top soil, Selecting grass, we can come and change this to whatever we want. If you start typing in asphalt, you'll get asphalt dark and asphalt light. Asphalt light, perfectly fine. Pressing OK, we can see that automatically change to a road. If we wanted to repeat that same step for the curb and make sure the curb was dark, we could do that as well. And then we have a light road, a dark curb. I'm pretty certain this will remain as grass or some sort of landscaping, but the site as mesh existing will definitely not be grass. It will be turned and flipped and rotated, dug, everything in between. So it's most likely gonna be sand of some sort, sand, beige, perfectly fine. Press okay, and there you go. We now have four different textures on our mesh, one for the road, one for the curb, one for the verge of being grass, and of course, our actual site as well. If you wanted to go ahead and model all of the neighboring sites, extend the road and the curbs across, put some fences in, you absolutely could. With the feature survey information, you even have details of the houses next door, where their pools are. You could jump on Google Maps, document it, and be able to import it into your 3D renders at the very end. However, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna focus on just this site and just the mesh itself. One last thing before we wrap this tutorial off, we're gonna press Command L and open up our layers tool. You're gonna see that we have site mesh, but we only have really one site mesh. What happens when you start cutting, filling, digging, moving, and changing the actual parameters of the site? Well, what I'm gonna do is select our mesh site, come down to rename, and go existing, 
Now, what I'm gonna do is actually create a new layer as well. It won't let me create a new layer whilst I'm searching. So I'm gonna exit out of that, tap new, go mesh dash site posed, click off it, and then make sure that I select our plan site, scroll down, activate the eye and update our layer combination, pressing okay. Now, when we come back into our site plan, I can hold my option button grab my eyedropper tool, change my mesh layer from existing to proposed, click once on this 6-4 contour line, go to our end and finish off at the top of our 6-4 contour line, circle around it, finish off our shape and our texture. What I now wanna do is select one of the end nodes, go to our subtract from polygon and hold the space bar to subtract and cut out all of these extras, which we don't need because they're outside of our 6-4. And there we go, now our mesh is perfectly cut into that 6-4 parameter. I do still wanna slope it a little bit. I don't want it to just bank at 6-4 all the way and have a big 200, 300 mil gap here. So what I'm gonna do is introduce a couple spare nodes over here. Make sure these back ones are 6-4 and then I'll adjust just these two corners in 3D. So coming back to 3D, you can see our proposed site mesh there. I'm simply gonna drag that one down and drag that one down to match our mesh. So now we have a relatively flat site at 6.4 that we can utilize for the purposes of design. Good practice honestly would be just to put this 6.4 mesh underneath the house and allow the house to step down to 6.4 so that we didn't have to retain any of these sides. However, we're just assuming that there's an endless budget we can retain quite easily. We can bank, we have no issues with our neighbors. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And to the side of me, you'll see the complete course, which I'll add to weekly. But like I said, that is all for me. So I'll see you next Monday.